I'm Fade FX. I'm a world-renowned dotwork tattooist. I'm also the only European who has been taught the ancient skill of hand tap tattooing from Borneo. I've travelled the world tattooing and being tattooed. The method of tattooing and culture based around this practice is unique in Borneo. I wanted to document it before it's lost with the elder generation, as tattooing stopped here after the tribes converted to Christianity. I'll be interviewing the new generation of tattooists who have emerged since the revival. After, I'll be travelling deep into the jungle to speak with the most recently converted tribes about tattoo history and tribal culture. We spoke to one of the most informed historians in Sarawak, Leo, from the Sarawak Cultural Village. Okay, most of uh, the history um, started back then. How did people know so much about Borneo Island is because of the headhunting done by the people, our people, the tribe. War broke out between the tribes, you know, uh, small scale, big scales, taking people's head, especially the enemies, right? And before the white raja came. So when people talk about head hunting, they thought that we take everyone's head. No, wrong. No, there is a court of honor. You don't take people's head just for granted. And we don't take women's and children's head. But men, yeah, beware. The warrior, leader, chiefs, beware. We get your head, but the women and children, we let it go. You know, when our people want to attack the enemy, we're going to send out a warning. You know, we send out a warning. Why we send out a warning? So that the women and children go away first. So left the men behind to defend the house. And then uh, when a man in you know, a tribe, let's say coming of age, you know, he's like, plane on his body, nothing at all, you know. When he joined the first, what we call it, um, war or head hunting, go and come back and he succeed in what he's doing. He had a piece of uh, enemy's head in his hand and come back, right? And then they will do a ritual for him, you know. He, he's, now he's a man, he's a real man. He can stick away an enemy's head in, right in his hand. So. He might have uh, first like the brinjal flower on both sides and then going to have it here, second and third. Here in Borneo we have more than uh, 30 different tribes, the big groups and the subgroup. Okay, first one, let me introduce you to the Iban people. The Iban are known as the Sea Dayak. They are large, the most largest group of uh, indigenous or tribe people here we have in Borneo, especially in Sarawak. Right? In Sarawak, and a bit in Sabah, in Brunei, in Kalimantan, Indonesia. That is the part of the island of Borneo. The tattoos that you see, like the, what we have, uh, the, the younger people or the elders, they have their you know, shoulders, on their throats, and the fingers, and the legs, and the backs, their butts, even their ankles and everything. You know? uh, most people with a lot of tattoos is the Iban people. And why they have tattoos back then? It signifies something they have done and achieved in life. And uh, it shows that this guy been through a lot of things to become a man and to become a survivor and uh, to be strong in his tribe and also to protect his tribe. I met with Jeremy Lowe, internationally respected hand tap tattooer, at an Orang Ulu longhouse. He taught himself tattooing back when everyone in Borneo had stopped. It was him who passed down this skill to me. Hand tap tattooing is very easy. Two sticks, that's it. Or just, it works with two sticks, one with a needle tied in end, and the other works as a hammer. And basically it's just a, the size and the length depending on what, what tattoo you're doing, which part of the body. Different parts need different sizes, it's just like the machine. Different needles, different tubes, and different kind of machine. So, this holds the needle, and the other as the hammer. 
and the voltage is your hands. Tattoo ink, they use the ash or like burnt carbon from below the pot and just scrape it off and mix with sugar cane water, boil down and mix the texture and it's easy to tattoo. The tribal culture here in Borneo, um, back in the days, people just want, to, just want to get tattoos. It's aesthetics, it's just to show, it's just to show off. It's just to show to the other, you know, it's just to show to the other village. I have more tattoos than you, so I'm better than you. The Highlanders, only the women get tattoo. So when they, you know, when they have daughters, the daughters, they will get all their daughters to tattoo. And just to show off to the other village that they have money, you know, they have money, they have wealth, they have strength, you know, power. When you have visitors that come to your village or come to your long house and you can see, hey, you know, wow, your daughters have a lot of tattoos, very beautiful. My man in my long house will want to marry your woman in your long house. So for the Iban ladies, uh, when you see that they have those uh, like a bracelet arm bracelet design on their arms, on the anklets, or a sort of single line they have on the, the fingers, and also three dots here, it represent that she's an important kind of woman in, in our tribe in the Iban. She could be a uh, good weaver, a master weaver. She could be uh, very good in medicines, like as a shaman or whatever, you know. And also uh, she's good in house chores or taking care of their farm when the men are going away, working or traveling or war back then, she would take care of all things. So it signifies that woman is something, she's special, she's not any ordinary woman. It symbolizes status. From which family of caste you are? Are you from the high caste, or middle class or the lower class? The meanings of tribal tattooing in Borneo has changed and it's always changing. The meaning changed because of uh, bullshit from tourists, right? They, okay, not bullshit from tourists. I think it's like this. Tourists come, they want to get a tattoo, they want to get a meaning, meaningful tattoo, and tattoo artists made it up to make money. It's all made up to make money. It's like, uh, for example, the most made up joke about Borneo tattooing is the, is a spiral Borneo life thing that, your journey. I think that it starts because of uh, tourists that come, they want a story. They want a fantasy story to bring back to their country. And of course, tattoo artists just, uh, just made up all the stories, you know? Just made up protection, this, and safe journey, this, and whatever, just to make money. The more you pay, the more meaningful it is. Easy, now it's like that. You know, back in the days, it's simple. I got tattoo, I got bigger tattoo than you, I can stand more pain than you. That's it, I'm, I'm a badass, you know? So where are we going then, Fred? Uh We are going to Skrang River, and we're gonna go to a longhouse called Nangamura. And then from there, tomorrow, I think we're gonna take the boat further up the river and go to another longhouse. The Skrang River was a day's drive from Kuching. We traveled through primary rainforest and over mountains in a hired four-wheel drive with our new camera assistants and translator Ezra and Pai, and our guide and good friend Boy Scrang. We travel from longhouse to longhouse up the river, searching for those from the traditional tribal generation to interview, as there are few left now. So we've just got to a part of the river that's a village called Murat, and there's a concrete longhouse here. It used to be wooden, but they've changed it all. And we're going to get a boat up the river to another village where there's a wooden longhouse, which is where we're going to stay tonight and look for some elderly people with the traditional tattoos. Um, it's quite shocking actually arriving here because this is where I've always come to get the boat to these long houses when I've stayed with the tribes before. Um, and this river used to be blue and clear um, and they rely a lot on the fish source from this river for you know their staple diet and uh, for washing as well. And as you can see, the river's brown now. This is because more loggers have come and gone upriver and took the bigger trees, so it's polluted the entire river. And um, when it's brown like this, you get more crocodiles, so it's, it's more dangerous to swim. So this is the village Murat, and this is the old long house. You can see the back of it. The front's actually cut away now. They recycled the wood. Um, but yeah, you can see this is the old long house made out of corrugated tin. That noise is pigs. 
<laughs> and then this is the new longhouse made of concrete. And um, yeah, so you can see how, how it was and how it is now. This part of the longhouse is called the Ruai, which is like the common yeah, area corridor. Um, yeah, the old one, longhouses, it's all just wooden. And everyone sits around socialising, this is like the social area. Uh, but yeah, you can see it's like pretty shiny, pretty modern. It's not much different from a city house now. And there's no one in it. Partly the time of day, some people are out working. Um, but partly there's just not, not the same amount of people in long houses anymore. The kids move, move away, get city jobs. Ah, oh, he's a tattoo guy. He's the only one in the village. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you. Okay, one day and continue this one, next day, yeah. and next day, this one, and next day, this one, and next day, this one. Uh, were they consecutive days? Sorry? Yes. Consecutive days, yeah, yeah. so he did all of that in one yeah, week, yeah, 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 like yeah, day yeah. after I, day. I yeah. yeah. And day after. Day wow. After, yeah. In one week. Yeah. yeah. What's this place called? This one? Mijong. 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 So yeah, we're just crossing the river in the boat because the bridge up here fell in. So we're just um, just going from one side to the other on the boat. Stopping here tonight. This is the wooden longhouse that we took lodgings in last night. This is the communal part of the building, the Rawai corridor where everyone sits and does craft work or whatever. Um, we had a barbecue outside on the porch last night, but this morning all the tattooed elders are away at a funeral, so we can't speak with them. So we're going to continue our search and go further up the river by boat to Boyd's longhouse. The road was quite dangerous as it was muddy and monsoon rains had been heavy and we didn't have the correct tyres for off-road driving. Good. Maybe <laughs> 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 We waited at the riverside while hours passed. We'd sent a message for boys' aunt and uncle to meet us with the boat here, but there's no signal, landlines, internet or postal service, so we had no idea if they were coming. We became anxious we'd be stuck here for the night. Apai and Endai arrived, and we were relieved as we'd just given up hope. I was pleased we'd not have to make camp here for the night, and we could continue our journey upriver. I stayed at Entelau Longhouse several times in the past, and Endai had adopted me as a daughter. It felt a bit like coming home. Travelling upriver was usually a beautiful journey through the freshest air and thick rainforest. Last year when I came, there'd been the first signs of logging. This time, there were not so many areas untouched. Trees here are mostly being cut for palm oil, which is added to a surprising number of products worldwide, and teak furniture. It was heartbreaking to see these people's environment destroyed. My first visits to the village years ago, 
the community lived in a wooden longhouse, but since they finished the construction of this concrete longhouse. Just arrived at Ulu Sprang, which is Boy's Longhouse. It's a concrete longhouse, it's a bit more developed than the last one. And um, it's monsoon season in Borneo, so this is what we're up against. But we got here just in time for the rains to come. The second we walked in the house, it absolutely came down, so yeah, we're quite lucky. Wooden longhouses could be repaired and sustained from their jungle. The concrete one requires money to maintain. This is the family's part of the new longhouse, which is similar to a modern Asian house. I caught up and prepared dinner with the family. There was even a local delicacy on offer. You're going to eat one of them things? You ready? Our final night in Ulu Sprang, we made tattoo tools out of kindling sticks and I tattooed one of the villagers in the Ruai. I had just showered and was ready to sleep, so I was not expecting this spontaneous opportunity to tattoo a member of this longhouse. <laughs> we met Brian at a barbecue in the village the night before, and he agreed to talk with us about the old ways. ตรุนิบันอารีอารีตารังเคลียดะบาปปุปปุลตรุนตะเตสัมเปชรตุปตรุนิบันนะบิสิปันตองมะกังเอาอ่าอลัมกะตะดิอ่ากุงไงมะส
two bands have recently took a liking to karaoke. There are karaoke videos of their pop stars like Ricky L, who are popular in the longhouses. Drinking Moonshine, which they call Lankow, and Rice Wine, which is called Tuak, are very popular here. Okay. Cockfighting and gambling is also a popular pastime in the village. <laughs> In only 30 years, 80% of the rainforest here has been cut down. These indigenous people and many of the planet's ecological cycles depend on the rainforest. When the logging is connected to the Mafia and government, it becomes difficult to stop. I contacted over 30 charities and organisations to see what is in place to protect these people and that forest, but there is little or no protective systems in place here. In one generation, sustainable life could go beyond the point of no return. <laughs> Like in uh, some, some part, they like uh, uh, when you see from the hill or sky, you can see like nothing, ball, like skin, no? skin, skin head on your, <laughs> your head. Nothing, no, no tree, no, nothing. Well, and uh, they make, mostly they make all palm, everything. It's a, uh, oh, I don't like, I don't like this company, all palm, or something like that. It affects me, you know. Uh, it's not nature. When I go to my village, I back to my, uh, to my village, I see that uh, the river is uh, sometimes it's become brown, you know, uh, mostly brown. Not like, not like, uh, Ten years back, clear. You can, you can. This is uh, water. You can drink. Huh? It's clean. Laban baka baka tuogi nyam noa buaknya, nyam bay keruanya, alerom kerjanya. Lu sekarang tu dah, dan ada lagi. Nah, dah. Mungkin yang kayu nade mana lagi? Kau besar besar, mesti nyaw dah tumbang orang di nini mu nyagi. Agi, agi kami tu agi. And also the the animal also run run away or die, you know, because uh, their their home is uh, destroyed by the logging, yeah. And now too many logging that uh, who cut the forest, you know, it's uh, mostly their uh, mafia. You know? We can we can stop it. If we, we if we do that, we 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 will maybe they will uh, uh, beat us up or we go to jail. Dah lanjut nanti mau nya deh. 
Aku dah lama tak mahu setuk. Banyak nanti mahu pun kenyak. <laughs> For example, the logging came here. Uh, came here to take the, uh, the tree and uh, they asked for the for the village and the chief to to get the tree and uh, the, the the company give money to, to the chief uh, it's not it's not much you know but for money the the the, the chief just taken you know just take okay Okay, I take my, uh, okay, okay, I agree with you. I take this money, then okay, you go take take the tree, you know. And I hope one day government maybe have some solution, maybe do some plantation and cut some tree plantation, and then cut the timber company from cutting our tree, so our next generation know that we have a lot of beautiful. Beautiful jungle and beautiful animal in our place. That's it's really hard to find from other place. The future of tribal tattooing in Borneo, the, the new generations are, are doing newer designs, newer patterns because of the equipment and uh, no, more influence from the outside world. So patterns are changing, which is also based on the old, old way, which is, I think is really good. And in the future, I don't think the, the, the traditional tattoo will be, will be lost, you know, because um, the appreciation is there, the understanding is there, and uh, um, the, the knowledge is already starting now. <laughs> Tak okay, benda kita dia tahu lain, luke luke sembarang dah. Padamlah pengawaknya, bakal ada saya kelihat ni. Ya saya patut ada pajak pengawak tu. Dia tu dia mayuhnya orang dulu dia, besi siku lelaki tahu, nama agak bunga itu. Udah mayuh saya dah serumah, udah agak tu itu. Tang tu tak berapa tu pada aku. Kalau tu luntur. <laughs> Tattoo connects people no matter where you come from, religion, country, nation, race, color of your skin. It connects you anyway. Tattoos has no barrier, they can be anywhere and it connects people no matter where you come from. What we've learned through this journey is that Iban tattooing is going through a revival among the new generation who celebrate their heritage. With modern influences shaping their world, who knows where the future of Iban tattooing will take us? <laughs>